So as I said, I would be doing book reviews of um, physical culture books. This will be a review of Exercising in Bed by Sanford Bennett. Um, it's a very interesting book. It's um, a lot of the ideas. Um, Bernard McFadden, who I already did his uh, review of his book, Vitality Supreme. Bernard McFadden um, inspired both Charles Atlas and um Sanford Bennett, or really, it seems more like Sanford Bennett may have inspired, um, what's his face, uh, Bernard McFadden to an extent, too. A lot of the exercises, I'm going to give you an example of the exercises. Now, a lot of these exercises are uh, isometric and isotonic, more so isometric, meaning you're not moving, you're just tensing the muscles. And he shows you how to develop the body with muscular tension what uh, Charles Atlas called dynamic tension. Um, now, what's interesting is the uh, he, this does contain a clinical report that shows that he did grow younger through the implementation of these exercises. Obviously, he didn't fully grow younger or he wouldn't have passed. Well, again, I don't know. He passed away choking on a chicken bone. So maybe, who knows, maybe he did find the fountain of youth in tension exercises. <laughs> But the, uh, there is an um, examination, of course. But some of the exercises are uh, massage, massage exercise for developing the biceps and triceps simultaneously with the loin muscles. Exercises for developing the triceps or back muscles of the arms, meaning the triceps, which are, you know, the, the back of the arm, back of the upper arm. Uh, twisting exercise for the development of the arms, resistance, that's for the forearms, resistance exercise for developing the arms, resistance exercise for developing the forearms, pulling exercise for strengthening the muscles of the back and the loins, uh, single arm pulling exercise, tension exercise for the whole body, exercise for developing the back and shoulder muscles, bar exercise, which is actually a hickory stick that he had across the top of his bed frame. These exercises are done in bed underneath the covers because he was uh, he didn't want to get out of bed in the cold. Uh, so there's a bar exercise number one, bar exercise number two, which is, like I said, it's a hickory stick. It's a, I forget what he said in diameter, but exercises for developing the muscles of the sides and the loins, exercise for developing the lower abdominal muscles, uh, exercise. Now, these are gentle exercises, mind you. These are not aggressive exercises. You're not going to hurt yourself probably doing these exercises. But of course, I'm not a doctor. So please, if you're interested in these exercises, see a physician or another medical professional and throw it by them. Uh, exercises for strengthening the loins, exercise for developing the legs. What is dyspepsia? Um, possess, uh, possession exercise for strengthening the abdominal muscles and improving digestion, the reduction of an obese abdomen, exercises for the reduction of an obese abdomen, exercise for developing the muscles covering the shoulder blades, exercise for broadening the shoulders, the lifting board. The lifting board is interesting because Dragon Door is now selling something like this. It's, it's like a static um, board. Now, Dragon, Dragon Door Publishings is a chain connected to a, a stationary plate uh, steel thing that you pull on. And it's similar. It's a static, it's with ropes, inflexible ropes that you pull on to develop tension in the arms and the body. Uh, that's what he calls the lifting board. It's an, an ingenious little thing. Uh, and if you read Pavel Satsalin's works, you'll notice the importance of exercises like the ones mentioned in this book to do what Pavel says is remove the brakes. Uh, which gives you a ability to be stronger because it removes your body's natural tendency to stop from getting hurt. Um, so where are we at here? Uh, the stretching board. The stretching board is actually a large board, like a four by four that you hold and you like hug it to get a dynamic stretch or a, an active stretch of the whole upper body. Um, dumbbell exercises, dumbbell exercises for two hands, the liver, uh, let me see what I'm missing here. Mm -mm -mm. I'm not going to go into all of this, but exercises for the liver, the neck, exercising the neck, muscles of the throat, exercise for the development of the throat muscles, exercise for development of the throat muscles, second exercise, 
rejuvenation of the face and neck. Now, if you notice, his face does appear to have grown younger. Um, if you look at his face, exercises, and I'm going to start implementing these things too. So hopefully maybe they'll work on me because <laughs> I'm looking old as hell anymore. Exercises for the development of the face and neck muscles, uh, the lines of age, the skin, muscles of the cheeks. There's an interesting exercise he shows for the cheeks where you put your fingers. Luckily, I just sanitize my hands like this. And go, uh, 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 and it tones the cheeks. Uh, so that's an interesting exercise right there that's mentioned, which they now sell devices that do that. There's a device that you stick in your mouth and it does it as two little um, stainless steel arms. They used to be in bodybuilding magazines when I was a kid, uh, back when I would read bodybuilding magazines. Uh, before I realized the wonder of books. <laughs> Massage for the muscles of the chin, the hair, deep breathing exercise for the development of the lungs, cleanliness external, cleanliness internal, varicose veins, the cause and the cure, rheumatism in conclusion. And then there's all these uh, illustrations and photos that, you know, that are linked. Uh, so what do I think about this book? Well, the good thing is about Sanford Bennett's writings is they were reviewed by Nature Magazine, which is very interesting. Uh, and Nature Magazine does indeed state that, you know, if you do practice these exercise, uh, exercises with diligence, they will improve your health, if not your looks. They're not sure about improving the looks, but about the health they are. So the point that I would make is this. This doesn't seem, he does not cover nutrition. In fact, he doesn't, he thinks that exercise is the tonic in this book. Um, however, I did order another book of his called Old Age, the, It's Cause and Prevention, which does mention diet, because I want to see how similar this is and how superior it is. To me, it seems superior to what Charles Atlas proposed. Um, and I want to see how similar it is and what, obviously, what can I implement from it and what can you implement from it after all. Um, that's why I'm making these videos. But I think a lot of these books, these, these, these books, these physical culture books from the early 1900s, late 1800s, and even earlier, contain information so important to the development of the human physique and human health that um, gerontology and juventology, they're not looking into these things for whatever reason. Um, some people are, like they're looking into fasting and things of that nature. But a lot of this stuff, this, this really does remake the body. This is the oldest, you know, these are old fashioned physiotherapies that really did work. And that's what's important is what works. See, a lot of people look at, well, this research shows this and this research shows that. What is actually observably true? Because a lot of times this scientific research, doing everything by what happens in the laboratory, is not necessarily what happens in real life. And that's what happened to me by implementing a low-protein, high-starch diet, is it really did whack out my uh, physical composition. Uh, and it was not a high calorie diet, things like that. That's when I started getting back into the fact that I got to look at not only what makes sense in the laboratory, not only what makes sense with laboratory animals, but what's making sense with people. What's helping people live longer? Okay. Is it uh, a low protein diet or is it something else? Okay. Is it the phytonutrients like Dr. Atkins mentions in Dr. Atkins' age defying diet? where he points out that, you know, the Mediterranean diet, he believes the benefit of the Mediterranean diet lies not in the low saturated fat, but in the high monounsaturated fat and in the high phytonutrient content of the food consumed on the Mediterranean diet, more than the low, the overall low fat content and the overall low saturated fat content. He believed it was more so the phytonutrients. And you know what? I'll even leave a link to that, Dr. Atkins and the Great Nutrition Debate. I think a lot of, I'm a promoter of Atkins. I always have been. Um, I think Atkins is maligned, unfortunately, because a lot of people see his ketogenic diet as the only thing he ever did. That's not true. He was a full, he was a cardiologist that practiced a holistic approach, a nutritional approach, along with medications, but primarily a nutritional approach to healing health problems. So I'm going to leave a link to the great nutrition debate in, 
in the uh, description of this so people can hear him debate other people. Um, and that's all for this video.